Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you so much to all of you joining in this talk. Like Rachel said, um, this is a difficult balance that I have to um, consider in this presentation because obviously I want to give you a taster and a sense of how much work and how exciting and how new and how wonderful our galleries are going to look like. But at the same time, um, I don't want to spoil the surprises, so I, I will have to be very shy in this, and we can talk about it, you can ask me questions after, but I have to be very, very careful with the, with the images, I just don't want to ruin the surprise. So let's just go a little bit back, well, just keep in mind, make a picture in your brain of so the gallery, the way that you see it, because you're not going to see it that way again. So that's it. Bye, old gallery. And so this is what we've been working on during the pandemic. Um, there was a lot of work and a lot of thinking from the design team and from the, the exhibitions team about how to uh, make a better use of our spaces and how to make the space work better uh, for our audiences. Also, when we are working um, on their swapping from one exhibition to another. And so um, the design team came up with this is the configuration of the space of the gallery as it was before the pandemic. And then the design, uh, the our country and design, Chris McClure proposed to break the walls uh, and the partitions so that the gallery actually can go back to its original design uh, with the base going into these horizontal directions. And that way, is the way it looks now. And that allow us to have temporary exhibition spaces in the two back base. And that means that when we can, we are working in a new exhibition, we can block this and you will still have a sense of the visit of the gallery while we do our hard work on the back here. And, and without interrupting your visit and also allowing us to do our work so with this in mind, uh, then we thought, okay, great opportunity to do a full rehang. Um, and, and that also coincided at a time when the Huntrigan was coming up with a new strategy. And our new strategy is really um, guiding our new ways of working and the new directions and what the Huntrigan, what we want to be. So a lot of that thinking was really not reflected in the way that our galleries and our collections were presented. So it was really like everything, a combination between momentum, uh, practical reasons, and, and more, um, more intellectual or more conceptual reasons that all merged together. Um, so I'm going to start showing some some of the briefing for this project. And this has been a conversation between a lot of members of the staff. I think that um, everybody that I've been talking to individually, but also as a team, we have created a team. This is the way that we work now in the Hunterian. And we have all been thinking about what we want our collections, what we want our displays to be. And one of the things that came up quite uh, early on was that we wanted our collection, our gallery, uh, to reflect the, the richness of the collection and the variety of the collections, and that we wanted to have a more interdisciplinary and wider range of media displays in the gallery. Now, this is, um, this is breaking a little bit uh, the blurring the lines in between the Hunter Young Museum and other collections and trying to bring them together in the gallery. Now, this is not saying that we're going to change uh, what the content of the gallery and what the purpose of the gallery is, but we believe, and I hope that you will agree when you see the collections, that the artworks are not isolated from the time when they were produced and they are not separated from the social context and that uh, with some thinking and with some careful picking, some of the works from other, from other collections can be nicely brought together with the artworks and offer a different reading of the art. So here in the screen, you have some examples of that. So you have uh, some beetles from our entomology collection. 
and they will be there in the displays of the gallery um, in relationship with works of art and asking questions about uh, what do we consider, what do we think art is. We will also see textiles in the art gallery. Um, again, this is something that we have not had before. And on top of that is a Macintosh collection textiles, which is uh, adding again, when we talk about working across collections, uh, we are also breaking that distinction between Macintosh going only in the Macintosh house. Um, we will include works by Macintosh and some of them uh, very much locked. Numismatics is also uh, going to be represented in the new displays. And some world culture subject will also be in dialogue with the paintings and with drawings and with works on paper in the, in the gallery. Scientific instruments, uh, of course, science is so much connected to the art and to the art history, to the art production, how uh, painters and how the painting evolved uh, thanks to the new findings and to the new experiments, the new understandings of how light works. This is something that can be connected with the, with the paintings on the wall. And this is one of the things that we will try to do. These, oops, sorry, <laughs> spoiling now. This is the, um, and then nearby, this is a um, little bit of confusing image, but it's a piece of a slate. And that means that we are also going to have the opportunity to bring in um, the mineralogy, very rich mineralogy and, and rock collections at the Hunterian. So interdisciplinary, what range of objects, things that we have not seen before in the art gallery uh, are going to be a surprise. How do we mix them up with works of art? And we will, of course, have a space for very dear old friends that will still be there. And some of them not long seen, um, like the Jesso panel by the McDonald's. And this is, again, something that we, with the, with the gallery, we're going to have the opportunity to include these works and to incorporate them, to contextualize them in the landscape of our history and of the art of the moment, you will still be able to see a reproduction in the Macintosh house, but this is our exercise to open up those barriers and, and enrich the meaning and the value of these works of art in a new context. So we'll still have our beloved Ferguson and our wonderful Rembrandt. Now, I have to make a warning here. The fact that we are going to have the old friends in the gallery doesn't mean that we are going to tell the old stories. Um, artworks, and we will have a lot of these, can really be interpreted in many different ways. Uh, there's no one right way to interpret art. We can look at a painting and we can look at the way that uh, the brush truck is supplied, but we could also look at the painting and think about who commissioned it or think about who is depicted in this painting. Um, we can also look at a work of art and consider how did it came to be here? Why? So, and this is exactly what we want our audience to do in front of our paintings. We want to en encourage them to think them in a different way, to put them in a different context and to add more layers of meaning to the works. So, Having this painting doesn't mean that we're going to have a section about Glasgow boys or Scottish scholars. That is something that we are going to change, but the paintings will still be there and you will still be free to look at the paintings and think and feel whatever um, without us having to tell you. And we are going to introduce new paintings. Um, some of them have never been displayed before in the gallery. You have to think that at the moment, I think that our um, checklist of works, which is what's going to be in the gallery, is about 250 works. Um, it's probably going to be around 300. But at the moment, the ones that are already being moved and this are that. But think about that number and think about 
the 2,000 paintings that we have in the collection, the 40,000 works on paper that we have in the collection, we can only display a small number of them. But that's a wonderful opportunity because then that means that we can pull out new works that you have never seen because they are in our stores. So it's really um, giving an opportunity to works that have not been on display to come to the light and be appreciated by, by more people. Now, that also means that the space is limited and we will have to uh, take away some works that have been on display for a long time, that people have been seeing for a long time, so that we keep providing that uh, our audience with new experiences. So what you have in the screen are a work by John Hoyland that has been undergoing very intensive conservation in our um, public venues. So a lot of you visitors and, and staff from the university have had the chance to see this painting being transformed and being treated. And that has been part of the long preparatory work that we have been carrying on for a number of months to make sure that we look the best of our best for you, uh, that our paintings are ready and shining uh, brighter and more beautiful than ever. So there will be some of this that has been happening in front of the public eyes, but some of them happening behind the scenes, of course. There are some paintings that have never been displayed before in the gallery, uh, like this painting, um, Uncle Fer's Amers by Ethel Kolkohun. Long time not seeing. Um, again, this other painting by Josephine Hartwell Miller. And I'm already giving you an idea uh, of works by women that will increase tremendously in the art gallery. That's also one of the highlights and one of the things that I have been it has been a priority for me, but I also know that for many other people in the country, and we really wanted to have more works by women, and we will. Now, as I told you before, 40 or more thousand works on paper in the collection, and we hardly get opportunity to display works on paper. Now, this is because um, while some museums have a specific, a gallery is specifically devoted to display works on paper, we don't have that. And works on paper uh, have very specific display requirements. We can only display them for a certain extent of time. The light exposure to these works um, makes them very delicate. We can't have them on display for longer than four or three months. So that means that we have to. Traditionally, uh, uh, we have very, very limited number of works on paper, if any, in the gallery at all, and only for temporary exhibitions. With this rehand, we are making a big effort. We are doubling our efforts, and we will include works on paper. Now, these works on paper will have to rotate every four months. We will have to change those works on paper and come up with new works on the world. This is a tremendous effort from uh, colleagues from the collections management team, from conservation, curatorially, every team in the hunting will have to make, we have to go two steps forward. But that means that we are going to be able to play the strength of our collection much better. And we're going to be able to tell you, our audience, that if you come here twice or three times a year, the gallery won't look the same and we will have new ideas for you. So you need to revisit us, I guess. So on the, on the screen, you can see some of the works on paper that will uh, be on display for the opening in April. And yes, inclusivity and, and underrepresented people and how to bring those people, those voices to the gallery is something that goes back to the ambitions of the Hunter and the strategy. Now, how do we do that in an art collection? Um, we have what we have. We know that there are many works by non-Western artists and depicting non-Western themes that are not in our collection. And why is that? Uh, is something that we want to think about together with our audience. What does it mean that we don't have those works in our collection? What does it tell you about 
um, the way that our collections were put together and about our history. How do we want to think about that in future? So we're going to have um, some works by uh, usually groups of people that have not um, hugely been represented in our galleries, like women, uh, but also works by um, Afro-American artists, like this work by Doc's Trash, uh, a wonderful work by him. We know that our we will have, we still have empty spaces, empty gaps, um, void spaces, like this empty frame. So we will have some of that and we will find a way to formulate that in a, in a way that is a question for you and that we can have a dialogue. And I'm very sorry, I sound very intriguing, but I really don't want to say more about this. You have to come and find out. Now, a lot of the work that uh, has been going in preparation for this rehand and behind the scene is a lot of consultation and a lot of uh, conversations with um, some of our stakeholders, with members of the country and of the Glasgow of Glasgow University, uh, different members from the country and the staff, and and really keeping that very open attitude that we want the gallery to have and going forward also to keep that. So the result of what you are going to see in the walls is really the result of many, many conversations with different people. So for example, just to pull up one of the examples, what you see in the screen is a group of students from the Center for Gender Studies, Global, Global Center for Gender Studies. And these uh, students came up to our center, um, the research rooms that we have in the in the Hunterian that you are you can use by booking a lot of time through our collections email. So these uh, students came to our to our study center and they pulled out a series of works on paper depicting women and and in collaboration in a conversation we all created one of these rotations of works on paper that will be on the, in the gallery. So we are a university museum. We want to reflect what is going on in our lecture theatres and in the academia discussions. And you will have that. Um, and we also want to be open to these kind of conversations and to co-create with some of our um, stakeholders. And hopefully once we get used to this new dynamic and new ways of working, we will be able to develop more collaborations with more people because this is really what the Hunterian is about now. Um, there is going to be a lot of rethinking and a lot of new themes. And the new themes, I think, will be a balance in between um, art history focus themes, but also with a lot of very critical thinking. There will be critical thinking about the way that our history as a discipline has been created, but also a lot using these uh, works to think about our society and about our history and how it has been built, how it is a construction, who has been constructing these stories. And the paintings really, the works are, as I say that many times, they, they don't belong to the time when they were produced but they live in your life through the eyes of the people who look at them. And so works of art are time travelers and they can be interpreted in different ways and they have different messages. The works in the art gallery are works of art, wonderful works of art in their own right. But we also want to look at them um, and use them as tools, history tools to review how we have built our history and some of our conceptions and ideas. To Get in your minds this image of lady taking tea and that cup of tea, uh, because we are going to have a very interesting display with this um, with these two objects. Now, another thing that we want us to do is to rethink about our collection and and the history of the country and and the construction of the art gallery is a milestone in in our institution. 
And when it was built in 1981, when it was opened, sorry, in 1981, the construction went for a while. And there were many um, challenges and obstacles that uh, the Hunterian team of creators and director at the moment had to overcome. It was a joint effort. It was a fantastic outcome. And we want to celebrate that part of our story. We will have uh, some audios and some videos across the gallery talking about different themes. But we are also going to include um, part of our history, and you can see some of the uh, photographs of the construction of their gallery that are in our archive. So we're going to revisit our history and go beyond William Hunter. And I'm sorry that obviously, at the moment as we are talking, a whole team of people is thinking and working and designing and constructing of things and props and stands to offer these new displays. Now, display, displaying art can be done in many different ways and you can tell many stories about the way, by the way that you are displaying objects. We want to, again, keep in that spirit of being open and the openness, we are going to try different ways of displaying and we're going to be very experimental um, we are going to challenge a little bit some of the ideas of these new displays um, so it will be new things but it will also be a new way of show, showcasing showcasing our collections <laughs> 